Hi, this is Brian Russell. I hope you're having a great day. I want to go over with you a, a, a way to move through your IBS work and covering survey and interpretation. Again, at this point in the semester, we're beginning to wind things down, solidify learning, and I want to uh, acquaint you with a tool that's been available, and I've mentioned it a couple times. It's actually a template for doing your work. Those who are having problems organizing, I just want to go through the IBS process with you again quickly. You can find this template in our course resources. It's called a sample, sample temp template. Um, it was developed by one of my former students, Ronald uh, Marler. He was a, uh, one of my better IBS students years ago, and he did this, and I, I think this is a good way that you can organize your work. He essentially was mimicking what I do in, in my assignments. It, the key to doing good inductive Bible study work is to think of the whole process, but then chunk it down into bite-sized pieces. Most of our assignments, not everyone, are both a survey and an interpretation. And some of the ones have just been survey, some have just been interpretations. This is going to be a template that you can use for either kind of assignment or both combined. And this chunks it down. Again, the two big chunks that are working in this term is the survey process and the interpretation process. So what's in a survey? Again, when we start working on a survey, what are we looking at? We want to work through, the um, first, give titles to paragraphs if that's applicable. If it's a, you know, a larger unit, if you're doing a whole book, you would obviously give titles to the entire chapter. And then what you're looking for are main units and subunits. Try a diagram or an outline that clearly shows both the main units and the subunits. And try to um, focus on a, a two or three sentence rationale that justifies why you put your main units where you did. And again, rule of thumb, if you have more than three to four main units, rethink or justify your divisions again. While you're working on your main units, you also want to be working through the structural relationships, looking at the um, materials that you have, keep the specifics of the lesson in front of you, your class notes, your slides, and also have your handout on major structures. Again, structures aren't going to jump out at you until you've internalized them, so keep your list of structures with you. You won't find every structure in every unit. What you're essentially looking for are three to four major structures, again, not counting your recurrences, that connect your main unit. Some of you are still finding structures that just work within a main unit, you want to focus on major structures, the biggest ones that you can find, and these are going to connect your main units together, or it could be and or control 50% of the material. And then make sure for each structure that you identify that you write um, uh, uh, at least three questions, a definitional question, a rational question, and an implicational question. For each uh, structure, you're also going to want to have a strategic area. I have a separate video on the strategic areas, but again, you justify why an area is strategic, not based on whether you like that section, but on you want to find for each structure a smaller portion of the text that best exemplifies that structure. Then make a, a comment about the literary form of the passage, its atmosphere or tone, and then give any other kind of major impressions, uh, things that you want to remember about the passage that didn't fit into your survey. Again, a survey is a tool that gives you a map, a big picture, so that then you can begin to drill down. And so when we move to interpretation, remember, and this some of you aren't doing this, make sure you start your interpretation with a question or questions. So you always want to start with either a question, maybe it's the one I put in the syllabus, or if you want to, you can um, sometimes make up your own questions or use your structural questions. If you're going to use the structural questions, you use the question of the, from the structure that seems to be the biggest structure. And then you can write your question. If your question is not is too broad, you might want to re-ask it with some clarifying questions. Again, this is optional, but some students find it helpful to ask some smaller questions that help you to wrap your mind around what that big question is that you're going to focus on. Then it's also helpful to state briefly how you plan to answer the question. So which determiners you're going to use. Now, of course, you're always going to use context, meaning immediate context, the wider segment, and broader book. But you'll also always consult, consult with some commentaries. But don't forget about other determinants like word study, historical background, 
scriptural testimony. If you know Greek, you can use insights from your Greek language and others, but you always want to begin with context and always do a good job with the context. So again, restate your question and then begin to work through it. And when you're doing your context, this is where you're doing essentially what we learned in detailed analysis or observation, except instead of make, asking more questions, you're going to list your evidence and then you're going to draw inferences. And remember, the inferences are what you would use then to answer your interpretive questions that you've asked. Now, on this document, I have a couple of examples of what um, it looks like, what a, um, an observation would look like. Now, you do this for each of the determinants that you're going to use. You gather evidence from all your determinants. And then once you've felt like you've gained enough evidence, you write an answer or a summary, especially if you've gone a long way or multiple pages, that would serve to answer that first question. And then if you have time, you can move on to other questions. Then once you've worked on as many questions as you're going to work on, then and only then do you consult with others. Again, and in this what I mean is you're looking at at least two commentaries um, from um, the qual the, uh, from quality modern commentaries. Again, I've helped identify some. If you have questions about whether you should use something or not, ask me. But we're looking for commentaries. Um, you at least have the France one, and, and also Jack Kingsbury's book can um, at least be something for you to look at. Don't use notes and study Bibles. They tend not to be substantive enough. Don't use popular things. We want to use the best. And again, what would that look like? Here's a little example. So you want to clearly cite your source and then summarize what the commentary says. Don't just cut and paste, but summarize and then interact with it by saying how the commentary confirmed, contradicted, or nuanced what you said and talk about why you agree or disagree. Then the last thing that you want to do is you want to pull it all together into some kind of conclusion or a synthesis. Like you could say, if this was the only text that I had, what would what is this text attempting to teach? Again, you're not applying here. You're writing the uh, uh, synthesis of what it looks like the text was teaching in its original context without any assumption that it necessarily applies to us yet. That's going to be the next steps in IBS. So again, this is a way that you can organize your work. If you have any questions, uh, please uh, email them to me and I'll continue to try to give you resources to help you so that you can continue to improve. Again, thank you very much and I hope you have a wonderful day. Live by faith, be known by love, be a voice of hope to others.